were asking, like, why, you know, and I don't want to make this like, oh, gosh, nobody, is, you're not allowed to have a different perspective. I just personally don't understand. And and you can think, Purdy, I do. I think he's a star. And, and, and you can think much less of that. I think that's fair. Like, oh, no, he's good. He's good. I, you know, still got some things to figure out. That's all fine. But if you're still flying over, I still see people who are like, give me a break. That guy's not, that little guy, MVP? Yes. That little dork, MVP. Yes. How can you watch a Niner game and come away with the opinion that many have? It's a freaking star. Star. I mean, he's been amazing. I don't know how you can watch any of his games. You can look at the Philly game, the Seattle game, any game you want to look at. Yes, he's had some bad moments. He's had some picks. He had a pick yesterday, which was a bad throw. Yeah, I thought Either, that was on him, not Brandon. Well, it depends on like what Brandon was supposed to do. Sure, sure, sure. But the quarterback throws it. You know, it was a miscommunication sensation it was. is what it was. And they had a few of them and, yesterday. <laughs> yeah. They had a few of them. And Ayuk dives, and it's a deflection. It's a pick. And, you know, it's on the quarterback, essentially, yeah. until we know uh, otherwise. But that's it. Other than that, he was spectacular. So, I mean, what do you want from him? I just, why is that so uncomfortable? It feels like every time we put a new label on him, MVP, I'm going to do it right now. Star, why is that so uncomfortable for people? Because look at him. Right, but so Look at him. But look Look at at how he dresses. But look at a lot of our sports stars. Look at Phil Mickelson. Well, Steph Curry, I think, is a great comp in terms of looks. I'm not saying that Brock Purdy is the Steph Curry of football, but... Tom Brady couldn't beat me down the field. I could now, but you know what I mean? Right. Like, star in sports does not need to be... LeBron James. <laughs> I mean, that's Thank a star. You. DK Metcalf. IST champ, LeBron Look at, James. Indeed, indeed. Big for him. Big 500 Big if true. Man, he needed, needed it. it. Yep, needed it. <laughs> USC is not cheap. Uh, it's, it is for him. Um, <laughs> Diego and Marin. Hey, Diego, what's up? Thanks for calling. Hey, Will and Jibs. Uh, the opinions, negative opinions about Purdy come from his draft uh, position being Mr. Irrelevant because they come with expectations, like super low expectations. And Kurt Warder wasn't drafted, meaning when he walked in the door, nobody had any expectations of him. And so he was uh, able to, allowed to write the book and write the narrative about how he plays. And Purdy basically has to prove He's not as bad as every Mr. Irrelevant ever every time he touches the ball. I mean, I totally get it, except for I think that those things are very equal and you seem to be creating a separation there. You're the last pick in the draft versus not picked at all. To me, the expectations are exactly the same. There are none. There's no reason to think they're the same. Being undrafted means nobody had an evaluation of you being the last pick means you're the worst person. You're the worst kid to pick on the kickball team or whatever. You're the worst player. Right, but available. but but actually, no, the undrafted guy is even worse than the one who was picked because someone, and I don't want to get into semantics with you, Diego, but do you understand what I'm saying? Like, when you get to that level of the draft, no one's expecting anything from anybody by then. Seventh-round picks usually don't even make the team. and 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 undrafted players... Obviously, our undrafted players. Like, I think the expectations, thanks, Diego, for Kurt Warner and Brock Purdy are dead on exactly the same. There are none. Right. There were absolutely none. No one expected a damn thing from either of them. And I'm looking at the Kurt Warner uh, bio in terms of before that year, Uh and the Rams left him unprotected in the expansion (laughs) draft by the Browns, and the Browns did not choose him, even though the only Browns quarterback was Scott Milanovic. So the the Rams basically <laughs> were forced to keep him. Uh, Bono leaves in free agency. Trent Green is a starter. Banks, who was ahead of Warner the previous year, was traded to the Ravens. And so now it's Warner backing up Trent Green. Green tears his ACL. Rodney Harrison in a preseason game. And there you go. Dick Vermeil has no choice but to go to Kurt Warner. This team will rally around Kurt Warner. Right. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. We will rally around Kurt Warner and we'll play good football. Yeah. So I, I, I just I, I just wonder why um I wonder why there are multiple opinions here. And and I'm not saying everybody needs to see it exactly the same or agree, but it th- this is 
This is different now. You know, draftism, sure. Sizeism, sure. Golly G. Willikers. Ism. Sure. Clothes ism. JC Penny ism. But shouldn't that be done by now? Oh shucks ism. Right? Oshkosh Bagosh ism. <laughs> shouldn't that be done by now? Maybe that's a better way to ask it. How many games? How many games before you're like, seen enough? Star. I like think four more. Star. Four more. <laughs> okay. Honestly, because Mark, you and I have seen every snap that he's ever yeah. taken. We've it, seen every throw. Star. The nation has not. Okay, the that's fair. The country has not. That's fair. In terms of like, who is still like, yeah. who is still out there saying the things that, that, that they're saying? It's the country. And I wonder about the Dak versus Brock MVP race because Dak is much more of a known commodity and he plays for the Cowboys. So from a national standpoint, there's going to be a lot more Dak than there is Brock. Yes. Just on, like, for people who haven't really watched well, both. Well, but let's, but let's not act like the 49ers are hiding. The no, the 49ers. but they're not the Cowboys. Yeah, but, I mean, their games are, like we just said, Kevin Burkhart should get an apartment in, in Santa Clara. <laughs> right. I, I mean, the Niners are not hiding. This they're fan not. base has been traveling all over the dang country. They are... They are in a spotlight game every single week, Thanksgiving night, Christmas night. Here you go, Niners, Niners, Niners. Um, they're the biggest thing outside the NFC East for sure. Right, for sure. outside the NFC East. Right, but but I, think about Dallas in terms of like they had last week, they had Seattle on Thursday night, national spotlight. Sure. Last night, Sunday night football. At Buffalo this coming Sunday in a marquee afternoon game. At Miami, same thing, Christmas Eve. And then they have Detroit on Saturday night, the third game of a Saturday night triple right, header. I, These are all like marquee national spots. Right, though. but I, I I think the Niners could probably, right? They played the Cowboys on Sunday night football, the Eagles yep. in the game of the week, right. Thanksgiving night, Christmas night. The Baltimore like, game, I think, is yeah, everything. that's going to be, that's oh my God, the rating for that thing is going to be that's absolutely gonna be everything. dynamic. Yep. Just dynamic. All right, let's keep going. How about uh, Carol in San Mateo? Hi, Carol, what you doing? Hey, how are you? I can't believe I'm calling this show. But I, I'm a fairly new listener. I love you guys. Oh, Last Carol, time. welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I And I, when Brock Purdy came on the scene last year, I, I was in shock with his ability, even at that time, being so young, to step into the role that he did. I think it's what you, you've both been just saying, his composure. Well, I think he was on another level. I think he is the star. And his intuition, his instincts are just incredible. He's not... Uh, he doesn't have a huge personality. His composure is kind of quiet, but he, I'm just so impressed at how he can just stay focused with everything around him and his age and his knowledge is just beyond. I don't know. He's on another level, I think. Carol, I think you're touching on some of this here and thank you so much. Welcome to the show. We're glad to have you. Appreciate you calling. Like, I think the things that, that, uh, that, that Brock Purdy does well, um, they're a little harder to see. And, and maybe that's maybe that's a big part of it. You know what I mean? When people talk about him, obviously, he does not jump off the screen when you look at him physically. Sure. And, and his draft status never jumped off the screen, all of those things. Um, what jumps off the screen? You start hearing people go like, uh, uh, his processing. Right. Well, what the hell right. does that mean when I'm sitting there watching TV? What, what, you it's know like what your I mean? computer that has a great uh, processor. <laughs> right. Have you seen the decision making on totally. this kid? <laughs> right. Like, but if you, by now, that's all I'm saying. By now, by now, isn't this over? It's over, right? This For is, us, yeah. This portion of the conversation is uh, like I, we've we've kind of we've reached we've reached the end. Well, we 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 you have to go through it. The guy's a star. Is Brock Purdy? Is he any good? Yeah, he's yeah. good. How good is he? He's really good. How really good is he? He's great. How great is he? He's amazing. How amazing is he? He's the MVP. And I think that's where, it, when you go through all those, like the old flow chart, you know, how are you feeling today? If yes, go this way. If, you know, if no, go that way. And I think we've gotten to the point where you've gotten all the way through. And how amazing is he? Well, he might be the best quarterback in the league this year. Yeah. He might be the best quarterback in the league, period. And that will have to be proven out over Super Bowls and future right. years. But he's having the best season. 
Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even really get into the whole, this may sound funny to people with how much we talk about this. I don't care where he is on people's rankings boards. I don't Steven care. Steven Ruiz, 19. Yeah. Good. Behind Caleb Williams. Fun. Super. Cool content. Whatever. I don't care. That doesn't bother me. I, 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 I'm not here for the grandiose, he's going to be great seven years from now. I have no idea what the hell is going to happen seven years from now. Or even next year. He's having the best year this year. And there seem to be a lot of people out there that because of all the dynamics we're talking about, feel like he shouldn't even sort of be considered in the MVP conversation because of all this. There's too much good stuff around him. Right. Um, well, let me ask you this. Yeah. Why is Kyle Shanahan not going to be coach of the year? Why is Kyle Shanahan? Because coach of the year, it's a good question, and I know why you're asking it. You know exactly why I'm well, asking but you. Because his team is really good. But that's not all. That's not it. It's not just that his team is good. It's also that they were expected to be good. Coach right. of the year has become who surprised us the most. Right, like, which is a joke. I agree with you. Like, so MVP instance, is like, who's the most valuable player? Is Brock Purdy not valuable because he happens to be really good with a team that's also really good? No, Is that not valuable? You're 100% right. And I'm just playing devil's advocate, I'm, and I'm kind of playing your side of the street because in terms of what other people think and other voters, you look at this team and go, well, I mean, think about yesterday. McCaffrey goes 72 yards First on the opening the snap. Yeah. I mean, what, what did Brock Purdy, did he hand the ball to him firmly, and did he make that happen? It's actually a toss, and it was a beautiful one. Exactly. It's beautiful. Whatever. No, like to your you get point, the point, I do. The coach of the year is going to, like, I could see people going, dude, Stefanski. Stefanski's on, like, his fourth quarterback, and they're eight and five. And so people will yeah. go, right? How about, how about, uh, D'Amico? D'Amico will get coach of the year consideration because they were supposed to be absolute trash, and they're seven and six. If they end up in the playoffs, could D'Amico get votes? It's bad loss yesterday. I mean, no, um, no, yes, yeah, it's predictable. And well, CJ got knocked out. Yeah, he did. You know what I mean? But like, you'll you'll see this. Like, even go to, uh, I don't know. I mean, Minnesota. Look what they've been through. You lose your quarterback. Some might talk about right. Campbell in Detroit, although they're leveling Ooh, off a little bit. The fade route. Yeah, but you 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 vote for who you're like, whoa, you surprised totally. us. The Niners aren't surprising anybody. Right. But that that to me is the nature of the flaw in both awards because the MVP. So Brock Purdy's having not only the best year, but he's having a borderline historic season in terms of quarterback rating and completion percentage and all the rest of it. Yards but, per attempt. But we devalue him because he has so much talent around him and he's got a great coach. Right. And a great team. That, that to me, is nonsense. Totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, Jonathan in the city. Hey, Jonathan, you're on with Willard and Debs. What's up? Hey, guys. I just want to say, hey, um, you see that shot of um, McCaffrey and uh, Kyle Yusick on the sideline? That's the best poster of, you know, what was dubbed uh, last week as a, uh, you know, uh, gangster nerds, Stanford and Harvard, sitting together. Um, another thing, uh, Mark, to answer your question, most people are never going to go away because you know why? There's a lot of insecure people out there, and Brock is the complete opposite of those people. Brock is a very secure person. He's not jealous about anything. He's not here to, you know, to please anybody but the team and the coach and to do a good job as a 49er quarterback. And you know what he thinks in his head every time he walks away and goes to the locker room after a win? If you want to destroy my sweater, hold this dread as I walk away. As I walk away. Outstanding, Jonathan. <laughs> Outstanding. You brought Weezer to the party. Wow, that's Weezer. That is, okay. Yeah, that was strong. That was. <laughs> I love it when Jonathan's phone is clear. Little that's Weezer. Helpful. I didn't know that one. <laughs> yes, Weezer. Okay. Yes, I believe the song is called Undone. Right, and yes. it fits uh, the Brock Purdy profile, yes, I'm does. sure. <laughs> I just... You know what, though? Like, uh, you, um, Is he trying to dress more nerdy now? Is he, like... Uh, he should. Is he doubling down? He should. We need, like, uh, glasses him. with tape on it and a pocket protector. We need to send him an ugly Christmas sweater that says totally. Gangsta Nerds on it. Yeah. And just let him waltz in with, like, bad oversized sunglasses. It's incredible. Christmas night would be incredible. Against the Baltimore Ravens. I don't know, man. Are we a more cynical world now than we were 
25 years ago? Yes. I mean, but the thing is, everybody thinks that. You ask anybody who's 40, the 20-year-olds don't know what they're doing. Ask anyone who's 60, the 30-year-olds don't know what they're doing. But you know that's what I mean? always been the case. Everyone always thinks the world's going to hell in a handbasket. I don't really buy into that, but I'm trying to figure out, because Jonathan's like, oh, there's, there, it's because people are insecure. We've always had insecure people. What is it about this particular surprising player? Because from Warner to Brady to anyone else, George Kittle for crying out loud. No one's ever said it about George. You're in the fifth round. Are you just good? Because... I don't know. Kyle's calling your routes. No, like we don't do. Why this guy? Why this guy makes people so hesitant to just go? My man's a star. We've never seen it. We've never seen a player drafted in that spot do what he's doing, especially this fast. Isn't Warner more surprising? Like at least some, somebody used draft capital on Brock Purdy, right? Somebody well, gave I mean, Kurt Warner draft a, capital is a big way to describe yeah, it. But, but I mean, they could have picked anybody. But Kurt Warner had already been a pro in a number of leagues. He'd been arena league that's, and in the uh, World League of American Football, the Laugh. I mean, that's probably barely better than Iowa State. No, but he at least. I mean, Kurt Warner. By the time he became Kurt Warner in 1999, he was 28, and he had been a pro in multiple leagues. He'd been a grocer, and so it was equally unexpected. But when you look at it now, you can go, okay, he's a guy who at least had quarterbacked, and you know he he had done the pro thing in a number of different leagues. This guy is baby faced and out of nowhere, and Mister Irrelevant, and all the rest of it. So the fact that he's 23 makes it even more remarkable. Yeah, frightening, man. Right. I, like, I got no issue with it. He's a star.